Welcome to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Foley Long. And with me, we have Beverly DiMaggio, who is the Executive Director with St. Mary Council on Aging. And you see, I'm smiling because, of course, we have our conversations prior <laughs> to actually starting the show. And so I'm going to get back into interview mode. And I want to ask you, because, ask you since the centers have opened. Yes. And of course, we're getting notifications about this. Obviously, the pandemic is still going on. We're yes. still having COVID restrictions. Are you guys kind of putting a pause on things? Are you moving full forward, full force ahead? Well, Danica, we, we talked to our, our seniors, and they were ready. Uh, the majority of them were ready to move forward. And so we're taking it little steps at a time, okay? Uh, we now are doing... Uh, more exercising, not sedentary exercising like they would do. Uh, we're getting up and we're walking around uh, a block. Uh, I'm even going to, my Franklin people, I'm going to walk them down to the pocket, new pocket part so that they can see that. So we're trying to get them out uh, a little bit more and letting them know that they can stay safe. Now, we do require masking, okay? We do still temp, okay? Uh, of course, we sanitize and sanitize and sanitize. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, they're, they're ready uh, to make a move into being normal again, mm. okay? And we still have some that are afraid, okay? And we stay in contact with them. They're still at home. They have not chosen to come back to the sites. But we try to make it as interesting and as educational so that it gives them something to look forward to, not just to sit and drink coffee, okay? Right. Although they love their they love their coffee, okay? Yeah. And they love their little snacks. But now they're beginning to, uh, we're, well, we just finished. We had uh, all three sites had a coloring contest, okay? okay? And so we had uh, first, second, and third from all three sites. And then I had judges that picked the first, second, and third for the big site. And you would have thought that we gave them a million dollars. I mean, they were so proud of it, Jill. And then we had a, a sports uh, poster contest, and that was fun. So we're trying to keep them uh, as active as we can and as healthy as we can. And... Uh, we're really, to me, we're getting back to normal. I can just imagine the level of competitiveness oh, among yes. the seniors. But you mentioned about getting out and not necessarily being stationary inside the facility. I want to talk about field trips because I, I say field trips because I know you. Yeah. One of the field trips was going to the test theater yes, for the Silver Screen Classic, yes. or we may call it just the Screen Classic. Right. We're going to call it something, but. We have yet to really decide if that's yeah. going to come back, but yeah. have you looked into going other places? I know you provide transportation, but, you know, there are a lot of new activities you mentioned that you guys are starting to do, but what, does that also include outside of the facility? Well, yes, and, and we did that for, I think it was Veterans Day. We took them to the vet, uh, Veterans Memorial there in, in Franklin, and then we took them to the Veterans Moor here, you know, uh, out mm -hmm. here. Uh, we have plans to take them to Kemper Williams Park when they get the lights going. Uh, they want to make another trip to Kemper Williams Museum because they re they understand that they have some new exhibits. Yeah. So we are planning uh, something like that. And in fact, we we may even work with the Berwick High School students to have them come and meet us again, like okay, they did the before. Okay, the intergenerational conference. Uh, we uh, we are working on uh, a. Mm. Okay, Quilton, uh, there's a lady that has invited us to come and, you know, um, one of my sites, bring them one at a time because I can't bring that many people at a time uh, to, uh, to watch them quilt, okay? okay? A lot of them remember when their mothers or mm -hmm. grandmothers quilted and maybe they even quilted. Yeah. So it, it's something that we're trying to do. And anything that's going on in the community, I always open it up and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do y'all want to go? 
Okay. okay. How do folks who are watching and saying, this sounds really interesting, I'd like to be involved, whether as a volunteer or if they want to be an actual participant, how do they get in contact uh, with you? They just, they give one of my sites a call mm -hmm. and we, we welcome volunteers. We welcome people that have a unique idea that they want to come in and talk to the seniors about. Uh, we've had authors, you know, we had a, a poet okay. come in. Awesome. So of course, now we didn't understand the poetry, yeah. but it was good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just something new. Yes. And I think that's what matters most. All right. That's uh, our segment one. We've got so much more to cover. Come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Again, I am your host, Danica Foley Long, and with me we have Beverly DiMaggio, who is the Executive Director with St. Mary Council on Aging. And there are so many wonderful things, and believe it or not, this is one of the things we've never talked about, that the centers welcome guests. Yes. So if you have something interesting that you'd like to share with our senior citizens in this parish, please make sure to contact her. You can look her up on Facebook, St. Mary Council on Aging, or just do a Google search and you can find her at any one of the four, four sites in the mm -hmm. parish. That's Morgan City, Patterson, Franklin. Franklin. We have two in Franklin. And there's actually two in Franklin. So of course there are four sites. So just do a quick Google search and you'll be able to find her. Now I want to talk about um, something else that we don't normally talk about often and that's about Medicare. Speaking of guests, you actually will have uh, a Medicare expert to come right. in and talk about it. And there's always so many changes. Do you uh, recall what some of those changes may include? Well, I know there's been big uh, changes in the prescription drug, uh, several other programs, and I do not, because uh, I get, I'm Medicare, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't understand it, and I tried to read the book, so now that's why I'm getting people to come in that have been trained uh, to educate us about the changes because there were there were a number of changes okay and uh, the people from Tesh Action Clinic and from uh, uh, the hospitals have been very very good about uh, sending people in to talk and the thing that I like about it is they give an overall presentation in normal language right you definitely okay. need layman's terms because you can <laughs> get caught up and lost at the same time <laughs> well i had to go back and uh, sometimes i have to look it up on the medical dictionary uh, but also uh, they are very willing to have one-on-ones with uh, my seniors because they they want them to understand they don't want them to get upset when they go get their first prescriptions and there is a change uh, they they want to work with the uh, especially the seniors so that they understand that uh, what is happening with with this program. Right. And uh, I, as I've always told you, every time I've been on, I go to the experts. Okay, uh, because uh, I think you got to hear it from the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And you know I can tell them stuff, and they'll look at me and laugh. Okay. <laughs> Now, they may listen to me, but they'll laugh, okay? <laughs> this they take serious, and this is something that at our age, uh, with us being a senior citizen, is something that we have to know. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that I appreciate with the new programs is there are additional services that are now available mm -hmm. to my seniors that have never been available. So I think they need to hear the qualifications and need to be aware of it mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, dental, eye, and all that. Right. Kind yeah. of, even transportation, even food after you've been in the hospital. There's a lot of different changes. Yeah. So you got to go to the experts okay. that have been trained. Right. Yeah. Like you said, you want to hear from the horse's mouth. That's they right. want to know, hey, okay. is this covered? Is that covered? And, you know, I, I get it. And I'll, I'll tell something funny. One of my seniors said, well, I'll ask my, uh, nephew that's a politician in another <laughs> parish i said don't ask a politician right. anything so, i didn't say that okay 
I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> Even though I know sometimes I can get on my tangents and, and I've had some folks tell me, Danica, you, I, I see you on the voice. Like, hey, I'm just trying to do my job that's here. That's right. Um, you got to say it like it is. That's okay. it. That's it. That's um, it. But let's talk, I mean, something else that has also happened, and it's a good thing and a bad thing, and I won't say bad, just an unfortunate thing. Of course, post-Ida, yes. we've had some new residents Yes. come into St. Mary Parish, yes. and uh, many of whom have had to move to neighboring cities and parishes. Right. And we'll talk about that when we get back from break, but I just wanted to put it on your mind. Okay. And um, I just wanted to know, you know, have we seen maybe a, um, a surge in activity, I mean, not activity, but membership? Have people started to join? And have you met any of our new residents who have moved in? So we're going to save that when we come back. Uh, from break, but come on back right here on The Voice Coast on KWPJ TV 22. Welcome back to The Voice of the Coast. Again, I'm your host, Danica Foley, along with me. We have Beverly DiMaggio, who is the Executive Director with St. Mary Council on Aging. And we kind of started talking about this, about the new residents, um, evacuees that have now turned residents right. who live here in St. Mary Parish. Um, and I know for many people, no matter how old you are, I mean, this big transition to make and after such kind of a, you know, just a devastating situation, so many people have lost their homes in our neighboring parish over in Terrebonne and Lafourche Parish. Uh, but there's one particular story that kind of stuck out and you and I talked about it where there's an 83 and 85 year old couple that have moved into Franklin and now they're actually residents mm -hmm. and also members of the center. Yes. So tell me about that. And you know, it's fun to listen to them all talk, okay? Because they don't talk about the hurricane. They talk about growing up because they grew up in another parish. So they're talking about how they grew up how they courted, how mm -hmm. they met, okay, okay, and <clears throat> so that brings and and then it turns out that one of my gentlemen is a distant cousin to this one that he didn't, you know, because when they started talking about and mentioning uh -huh. names, they all got together. But it was very interesting to me to see the philosophy that went to work there. They just came to a tragedy, and my people weren't babying them, they weren't sympathized with them, they were helping them, mm -hmm. okay? And I think that's what really and truly they opened up and they saw, okay, we can make a life here, right. okay, mm -hmm. whatever time we have left. And, you know, they had lived in one place their whole life, they lost everything, they didn't have any family, so they made the decision to come here, okay? And can you imagine having to start all over at 85? And like he said, well, he, he laughed and he says, the reason I came to see you is because I don't have a car anymore and I can't stay in the house with her all the time, okay? <laughs> so I said, okay. I wasn't expecting so, that. <laughs> so we'll pick you up and take you wherever you want to go. And I said, but, you know, uh, Danica, you just don't understand. Uh, the seniors... They have a lot of feeling, mm -hmm. but they don't know to, they think if they bring it out, people are going to say, oh, look, they they got dementia or they you got know, Alzheimer's. I, I, that, and, and we talked about this prior to yeah. this, but I think this is the right time to, br to bring this up. I, I don't know if people just have this strange uh, view of our senior citizens. I, for one, I remember my grandmother telling me just emphatically, well, Danica, I ain't always been an old lady. I ain't always been a grandmother. And baby, I found out my grandma ain't always been an old lady. Maybe That's she right. was a hot girl, okay? <laughs> she had plenty of hot girl summers. But I think when I hear what you just said, it just humanizes you even more. Yes. You know, we see, we tend to look and view our senior citizens like, oh, they're just old people, very, you know, they, their minds are not all here. No, they're some of the, the sharpest and smartest people out there. Well, one comment that was made the other day was, you're living in the past, okay? Because, yeah, when we get together, we talk about when we were teenagers and when we were going to high school. And, you know, the thing is, 
we're not, we're not senile. Mm -hmm. We remember. We remember. And we're trying to educate. We had a good life. Yeah. Okay? We, we've done things. You know, like my boys used to say, Mama, how did you know about that? I said, well, you know, I was young once too, okay? <laughs> so, but the thing is, we tend to think that because grandmother talks about 20 years ago mm -hmm. that she's not in her right mind. But she is because she's trying to teach you something that she learned when she was 20 years That's of age. That's right. And nothing is new under the sun, right? Nope. So I love it. We're going to come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast with Beverly DiMaggio with the St. Mary Council on Aging Organization. Thank you. Welcome back to The Voice of the Coast. Again, I am your host, Danica Foley. Along with me, we have Executive Director of St. Mary Council on Aging, Beverly DiMaggio. And we have never been at this point where we're like, what are we going to talk about? We talk about everything else during the breaks. You guys will just probably, probably maybe enjoy the, the break conversations more. So, <laughs> I hate to say, because we don't say, we don't stick to the script at all. No. Never stick to the script, but that's okay. I, I still want to talk more about what's in store, what's for the future, what's in the future, because, you know, we're coming up on, is this the end of the fiscal year, the financial no, fiscal see, year? Our fiscal year is unusual. It starts July the 1st to June the 30th. June 30th, okay. But so we are coming up on the holidays. Yes. Okay. And so there are still, you know, you still have to deal with, you know, budget cuts and, yes. you know, just financial constraints. How are you guys still able to maintain, and, you know, especially moving forward? Like you said, you want to continue. Okay, um, the I, I'm glad you asked because uh, things have gotten pretty rough during the p pandemic, and they continue to be rough because we did get some special funding during the, uh, the pandemic. So I was able to add meals for these people mm -hmm. so they could stay at home. Well, now. Uh, that money is no longer there, but there is some additional. But it's creating a little problem with us because we have to put you on a waiting list, and we have a very lengthy wait waiting list. Mm. And I can't, because number one, I don't have staff, I don't have the equipment, and uh, I, don't, I don't have the extra money for the meals right now. We do have, I have written some grants, and we are... I, that I got a favorable response, so I am hoping that I won't have to cut anybody. But the main thing I want to say to the people that if you have called and you're on the waiting list, just be patient. We look, I look at that waiting list every day, and we try, I try to fit in where I can. And, uh, you know, if you really want, you can come to the center, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you'd enjoy the meal better eating it there with your friends than you would eating it at home by yourself. But just have <laughs> a little patience. And the other thing I'd like to say to everybody, listen to the seniors, okay? We're not senile. We've lived a good life, but we've learned. And sometimes you can learn from those experiences. Uh, it... I look back and I think, mm, my grandmother used to tell me that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as you get older, I think, and the thing is, be proud of your community. I don't see people coming out in the community and volunteering. We would love to have some volunteers. We'd love to have some guest speakers and not have, to. I need board members, okay? That's to serve the community and to serve the seniors, okay? We're here. We're not going away. Eventually we will. But we're here to keep the history and the good times of St. Mary Parish alive. Well, the thing is, we're all going to go down that road. You know, we're all going to get to that point. We're all, I mean, if you're, if you're blessed, you know, you know, you will, you will get older. And so at, at some point I'll be 
sitting where you are, yes. you know, and I just hope that people don't throw me away because there's still a lot more that I can offer. And that's what I, I hope people get from these interviews that we do, because, you know, obviously stay abreast as to what's going on right. with our senior citizen population and the, and the centers and, and just the whole Council on Aging. What the, what's, what's out there you, you, you offer, because you don't have to sit alone. You don't have to go through this alone. There are other people out there who also want companionship, want friendship. And, you know, just because you become a certain age doesn't mean that you have to give up on life. And I also think that's what we need to take, the younger generation need to also adhere to that same thing. Like you said, you need members, you need volunteers, and this is a perfect opportunity to do so. If you want to get involved, you can Google them. I mean, just a, a quick Google, or if you're on Facebook, I know we were down uh, earlier this week, yeah. <laughs> uh, but they're back. Um, check them out, St. Mary Council on Aging. Again, their fearless leader, executive director with St. Mary Council on Aging, Beverly DiMaggio. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And as always, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, KWBJ Live, and also on Facebook, KWBJ TV 22. Take care.